Hi there, uh, my name is Nick Pert. Um, I'm a Grandmaster. I'm also the National Head Coach for the English Chess Federation. Um, during my time I actually do a lot of coaching of juniors and I look at a lot of games of players played between uh, 1600 and 1900 and the focus of this DVD is to look for typical mistakes that occur again and again. So I've gone through a whole um, bunch of games between players around that kind of rating category. I've tried to look for common themes and I've put them into this DVD so hopefully um, you get some ideas of um, uh, the, the kind of mistakes that players of this rating make and how to avoid making them, maybe how to take advantage of your opponent making these kind of mistakes, and uh, what to watch out for. Um, each chapter is broken down into a theme, as I've mentioned, um, with several examples, and at the end of the uh, chapter there's going to be some test questions so you can practice yourself. Uh, you'll be put into a situation and um, you'll be asked, you know, what's the best move in this situation, trying to calculate the plans. Um, this isn't all about tactics, there's some positional ideas and just general kind of positions that you get in uh, in a game. Uh, obviously there's going to be some tactical calculation in, in some of the uh, some of the lines, in quite a lot of them, uh, but there's still going to be you know, quite a lot of um, standard endings or you know just things you know to do with overestimating your opponent's plans or when to exchange bishops for knights lots of different uh, common themes that will come up and hopefully uh, give you some uh, really good uh, advice and just give you a sort of fresh way of uh, approaching chess which should should really help you uh, with your play um, let's just have a quick look at an example here. Uh, this is a game from the British Under-16 Championship, two of England's most promising juniors. Uh, we've got uh, Roman Mitra playing white and Victoria Sit playing black. Um, in this position, white played the kind of uh, stunning move, knight takes g7. Now, I'm going to imagine that um, I'm sitting there in the black position here. So just let's try and picture the scenario. Um, it's quite early on in the game. We don't know roughly what the clock times are, but I'm going to assume now that both players have still got uh, quite a lot of time on their clock. Um, uh, my opponent's just played a, a knight sacrifice. You know, maybe I just haven't seen it at all. It, it's totally stunned me. Uh, my first thought is, oh my goodness, you know, maybe I've just uh, just blundered. I'm about to get checkmated, and uh, this could be game over. But um, once you've sort of had a uh, you know a few seconds to calm yourself and you look at the situation, you've got to make a practical decision as to what is the best move. What move is going to give you the best chance of actually getting a result from this game? Now before I sort of start looking at you know what the best move in this position is, I'm going to have a look at the move that was played. And uh, this isn't a criticism of either of the players, it's just um, this is a, a sort of standard uh, theme which comes up in lots of uh, games of players of this rating. Uh, Black played the move knight to e8. Now um, the problem with knight to e8 is after white exchanges with knight takes e8 and then rook takes e8, we look at the position and black is a whole pawn down and not only is black a pawn down but you know what an important pawn, the one right in front of the king. Now if I'm playing someone 200 points higher than me and I've got this position I'm thinking to myself you know chances are I'm almost definitely going to lose. I mean it's really going to be very tough for black to get anything from this position. So if we go back to the position after knight takes g7 you should be thinking in your mind if you have to play a move like knight e8 it's not the equivalent of resigning, but you're really, really very likely to lose that position. If you're playing someone who's 200 points higher than you, and you're just accepting a position where you're a pawn down, and a very important pawn at that. So, if it was up to me now, I would be desperately looking for another alternative. I mean, I would be willing to spend a, a large amount of my time in this position to try and find another alternative. And if I calculated a line which I thought looked even I was even like 50% sure that it survived, uh, then I would definitely go for it because the alternative is so bad. Um, so in this position, the sort of critical move is obviously the move king takes g7. And um, in my opinion, unless you kind of see that you're getting mated in this position, king takes g7 is a better option than uh, knight e8. Um, the reason being, you, you're winning a piece, so uh, obviously that's a good thing. I mean... Uh, white is going to get an attack, White's obviously going to follow up with the move queen to h6 check and now you have to uh, tread carefully if you're black but um, it's worth the gamble because as I say the alternative is um, is not very appealing. Um, in this position black probably has to play the move king to h8 and um, king g8 unfortunately wouldn't work because of knight g5 threatening uh, checkmate and um, uh, black's only way of stopping that would be bishop takes g5 after which white can play queen takes g5 check uh, king h8, queen f6, a very forcing line, king to g8 and bishop to h6, threatening the uh, checkmate on uh, g7. Uh, black's only defence really is to play the move knight to e8, 
but then uh, white's got the follow-up queen e7, and uh, the queen on e7 just threatens queen takes f8 checkmate, and unfortunately black just doesn't have a defense to that. Uh, for example, knight g7 um, would run into queen g5, and uh, queen takes g7 checkmate is coming on the next move. So okay, you'd have to spot that um, after queen h6 check, you have to play king h8. And let's suppose you, you just couldn't even analyze that line, so you're 50-50 that you get the right move. 50-50 uh, is better than playing knight e8. Sometimes you just have to give yourself the best possible chance to get a result in the game. You have to play good practical moves. Um, so king h8 uh, is the best move, and after that, white probably will follow up with knight g5 anyway. Uh, bishop takes g5, and bishop takes g5. Uh, white threatens bishop f6 check and uh, queen g7 checkmate. Uh, but now in this position, black can play the move pawn to f5. And I think actually black is surviving in this position. For example, if e takes um, on f6, black can defend the mate threats. Maybe something like queen d7 probably defends the mate threats. Uh, there might be other ways of doing it, rook f7 or something like that. And instead, after f5, if uh, white goes for the move bishop to f6 check, uh, we can play rook takes f6, and um, now white's got a dilemma. e takes f6 threatens the, the mate, and also has some ideas to push the pawn on, um, but queen d7 actually stops both of those threats, and um, in fact black might even be better in this position, but certainly uh, black seems to be doing okay. Um, which means white would have to play them if queen takes f6, um, and after queen takes f6, I think white doesn't have much better than taking a perpetual check now, uh, something like this. Um, the main problem is although the white queen is fantastically well placed and uh, black king is very open, uh, these rooks, you know, they're, they're quite far away from coming into the attack, so black's going to get some time to uh, defend her king. So in fact, um, the position after king takes g7 is in fact probably okay for black. Certainly in a practical sense, you, you've got some chances if you play king takes g7. So you just have to try and uh, come up with a move which gives you the best practical chance in any situation. Now, in fact, there is actually a move that black can play in this position, which probably leads to an advantage for black. Um, so I won't actually reveal that just now. I'll uh, leave that as part of the um, DVD. So hopefully, you know, you can have a think about it. See if you can work out how black can even play for the advantage. Uh, my one hint is that you want to try and get this queen over to the king side, somewhere like here. And um, if you can try and find a, an effective way for getting the queen to the king side, maybe taking advantage of the fact that the white king is still in the center, uh, you might be able to, to find a way of actually getting the advantage for black. Um, but certainly this example just goes to show you've really got to uh, play moves that give you like a real chance of getting a result in the game. Um, obviously no one wants to look stupid, you know, you play king takes g7 and maybe you get mated, um, but at least you've given yourself a chance to get a result. Um, and in fact if you... Um, if black had analysed carefully, there is actually a, an even stronger move than king takes g7 here, and I'll leave it up to the viewers to try and uh, find out what it is.